First thing we're going to do is go to GitHub. And we're going to go to the Armory Miniker repository. Miniker is going to install K3S. It's going to create a PVC for a local volume for Minio. We're going to install Halyard into its own Docker container. Some minimum system requirements are located in the README. And the installation guide is at the bottom. Once you've done all of these, you should be able to run an install script. And that install script should create and configure everything automatically. If we go into our virtual machine, we go ahead and do a simple cube CTL get pods. Here we can see that we've got K3S and Spinnaker up and running in a VM. Now that Miniker is up and running, we're going to use Visual Studio Code to go ahead and attach from our local workstation into the VM. The way we're going to do this is using the remote SSH client. So there's some installation guides here where we're going to install the remote development extension pack. And when we do that, we're going to be able to have a way to be able to SSH in and be able to edit files remotely inside of our VM. First thing that we need to do is we need to find out what the IP address is of our virtual machine. Once we have that, we can go into Visual Studio Code. Click on the little icon in the bottom left hand corner. We're going to look at our connect to host open configuration file. So for that config, we've already set this up where our host machine, you could give this a name, but then we're going to give it the IP address. Now if we click on the little icon in the bottom left hand corner, connect to host, and we're going to choose the IP address that ends in 225. It's going to ask us for our password. Go ahead and enter that and a remote SSH window will have been created in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this window so we can go ahead and open up the files tab. Inside the Files tab, we're going to open a folder, and we want to go to where Halyard is currently storing all of its configs. This is in slash Etsy Spinnaker. There is a dot .hal folder inside of there. Inside that dot .hal folder, what we want is we want to be able to see the profiles and the staging area. To be able to remotely connect we're going to need to modify some of the services. For the services, what we want to be able to do is to point the actual base URL to our local machine. Looking at the files, we're going to take our spinnaker.yaml file and we want to take the orca section because that's the particular version of spinnaker that we want to customize. So what we need to do is we need to create a spinnaker-local.yml file. And we're going to go ahead and paste in the orca entry. We're going to modify the base URL to be the IP address of our local machine. If we go and look at our local machine, here we can go up to EN0 on my Mac, and here we can see that the IP address ends in 195. Go ahead and change the base URL to your local machine's IP address. Once this has been set up, we need to go ahead and redeploy our configuration. So let's check and see what the current configuration looks like. 
we can see here this is just a simple base installation. So from that installation, let's go ahead and do a how deploy apply. Now all the services are going to go ahead and restart based on this new configuration. What's going to happen is there is a folder in the uh, default section that when we go in there will be a staging folder that will end up getting created which will be taking the base how config and all of the profile customizations and it will go ahead and route those to the appropriate services. Here we can see that we have our spinnaker.yml file as well as our new spinnaker-local.yml file now being passed across into our staging area. Now inside of IntelliJ, we have already gone ahead and cloned Spinnaker Orca into our current IDE. If we look at the module Orca web, inside of here we're going to go in and look at the Java services. Every service inside of Spinnaker leverages Spring Boot. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look for the main executable. If we look at the main executable inside of our IDE, here we're seeing that we can actually execute this. Let's look at the configuration that we've already set up for this. So our remote debug, we can see the main class. If you have issues connecting, you may need to set the server address to all zeros to bind to every IP address. So we've shown how we connected from Visual Studio Code to be able to allow our Miniker instance to talk to our local machine. There are some services running inside of the virtual machine that our uh, local machine is going to need to talk to. If we go in and look at the how config inside of Orca, we can see that we're going to need to connect to Redis. We're also going to need be, to be able to talk to Front50. And when we go ahead and do these things, we're going to do this by simply doing a kubectl port forward. To be able to do that, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and actually get the kube config from K3S so we can run it on our local machine. If we go and look at the slash Etsy Rancher K3S folder, inside of here there is a file called k3s.yaml. What we need to be able to do is we're going to copy everything that's inside this file and we're going to go ahead and put it into our .cube folder on our local machine. If we go in and look at the .cube folder, here we'll see a file that we've already got set up for this video. We pasted this file in here. This is the exact same config except inside of the server location. The server location here is going to be the IP address of the virtual machine itself. Now we're going to go ahead and export that cube config so it ends up becoming our default. And then we're going to go ahead and run our uh, Kubernetes commands. So we're going to do a kubectl and we're going to do a port forward for the different services. So the first port forward we're going to do here is to echo and echo is running on port 8089. The next service we're going to forward 
we're going to do the same thing export our cube config and do a port forward for front 50 which is running on port 8080 And the last one that we're going to do is we're going to attach to Redis by doing a port forward 26379. Now that all the port forwards are now configured, we can go back into IntelliJ and we can actually run a debug environment. This is a great way not only if you are doing active development, but if you're also running into issues, you can actually set debug breakpoints inside the source code, and you can actually go ahead and try to figure out where some of the problems are actually running into. Here we can see that we're now running on port 8083. And now that's attached to the 8083 that we set up in our base URL. The last step we have is to go ahead and execute our stage. So we found some code, our manual judgment stage .groovy file. We're going to set a breakpoint inside of the task that runs inside of the stage. Here we can go ahead and log in to our Miniker instance. When we log into the Miniker instance, we need the username and password. To get the password, you go to the spinnaker.how.secret folder. There's a spinnaker underscore password file copy and paste that password username will be admin password we paste that in go ahead and click sign in now that we've authenticated we're going to go into an application that we've already set up the application that we've already configured is called real world backend let's go and configure a new pipeline this new pipeline we'll just call Miniker Dev. Go ahead and click Create. Now we have our new pipeline created, so we're going to add our new manual judgment stage. Let's go ahead and set some of the properties for this particular stage so we can see what these values will look like inside of IntelliJ. So we're going to propagate authentication and we can set the judgment inputs. Now that we've saved the pipeline, we need to go back and execute this pipeline for it to actually show up inside of IntelliJ. As soon as we click run, it will automatically go over into IntelliJ and here we can see that we are executing this stage. We can see the stage ID as well as the execution ID. We can see some of the properties that have been set up. So we can see that we're using a manual judgment stage and the name for that particular stage. We can step over through the code, watch as the properties are being populated, any other things that may need to take into effect. You could use this if you were running into issues into your own Spinnaker instance just to be able to do some additional debugging. Once we get to the end of our stage, here we can see our notification state, execution status, and any outputs that we might have. Inside of our executing pipeline, what we can do is we can actually go in and continue running our application so we can actually fill out the manual judgment. Let's go ahead and click yes, click continue. Here we can see that our stage has executed and is now completed. Thank you very much and hope to see you in our next video.